I'm here to show you today how complicated these snatches are to put together. Now you don't know that name anymore because now we call it the super cradle. We had to clean up our act. So I hope you enjoy this. We're going to install a T case in it and I'm going to weld one up right now for you. in and I just want to show you everything here so we're just going to take it step by step. These holes back here on the rear output shaft there's three holes that are going to get bolts in them. We want you to clean these out. They always have dirt in them. So it's these three holes right here. Take an eight millimeter by one two five tap. We've already done that. We just want you to run the tap down, clean the dirt out because we are going to be using these to put it into the cradle. All right. We're going to take what we call the rib, which is this piece right here, 
and it has some little decorative pieces. And just hold that in, tap it with a hammer, keep the water out, because we know how you like to submarine these samurai. So that part is ready to put on. Next what we're going to do is we're going to put in the special made poly bushings that are made exclusively for Zooks Off-Road by a company very well known in the world as Daystar. So these last a really, really long time and they're a really great compound and you'll usually have to hammer these in. Rubber hammer, ball peen, piece of wood, anything will work. All right, we're ready to put the T case in. Got to take out certain bolts. I've already pre-loosened the bolts I have to take out. So we'll give you a close up after I take all of the bolts out so you can see which ones. All right, so those are the bolts that you take out. I'm going to show you how I want you to drop this in. If you would take a look at the cradle, I've got the back of the cradle to my right, and what we're going to try to clear is this drain plug right here. Now, if you have a late model Samurai T case, there's some webbing right here that you're going to have to cut off to clear this and sand it to clear. But I've found that it's easier to drop them in this way. When it's correctly ready to be dropped in, you're going to hang up right here. This is just the way that it's always been, and this is where I come in with the rubber hammer and tap it in. Now it's in the cradle but what I have to do is get all of the bolts lined up before I put it in the car. Don't tighten the bolts until you have all 17 in. Now if you had a rear drive shaft disconnect or if you had a disc brake on your T-case all you have to do is cut this back plate off right where my finger is. You just cut it off and now your accessories are going to bolt on and that's why we call this a 14 to 17 bolt super cradle. This is the reinforced version because I've had some big big rigs tear these up. I've had uh, some people jump off of 10 foot walls and land on rocks on this and so we just keep making them stronger and stronger. Uh, there's a rumor I have a lifetime warranty on this. It's really not true. It's just that I have replaced them from damage 12 years after one was sent to me. I couldn't repair, so I gave them a brand new one. So now that we have this in, we would want to show you this ring right here. You're going to put your little wire clips back for your four-wheel drive switch, but as you can see, the little half-moon ring goes behind this tab right here, and then you tighten all of your bolts up. After the bolts are tightened, now what we're going to do is we're going to put on what we call the hip and the rib. The rib is going to go on the driver's side. I like to start the bolts from the outside in. And typically it's very common to hammer them in. using nylocks. When you tighten this, please just touch the steel. Do not crimp the bushings. Let the bushings work 
So just tighten these, and if you have a little air gap, that's fine. I'm gonna leave these loose right now, but I wanna show you something really cool for install. Just pivot it up like that, it'll make it a lot easier to install it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in what we call the hip. As you can see, the hip also pivots a little bit. Nylocks on the inside, and you can tighten these nylocks. I just didn't want to do that on this particular install. All right, now this next phase, because we're ready to put this in the car right now. Obviously, I put the rear flange on after all my bolts are tightened. And don't forget to peen these. All right, we're ready to install it. Now, <clears throat> I need you to take a look at this, folks. There are one square, two thins, one long. This has been my biggest problem for a decade, is people not putting these in the right spot. So I'm going to show you where these go as I install the cradle. The first piece we're going to take and put into the frame of the Suzuki. So follow me and let's put this in the frame. There's a piece back here that's the lower mount and this piece will go right there until you have the hole lined up. If this is damaged, pound it in and it'll strengthen this. Now that that piece is in, The way that you want to put this in is you're going to come up from underneath and you're going to put it up on the cross member, swing it around, lift it up, and open that up. As you can see, it's already suspended there under its own weight. Now what I'm going to do is put the right spacers in the right spot. Let's start with the front. This is the hardware for the front. This was provided. And the way that this goes is it goes through the square. It comes underneath and up. Then the washer, then the lock washer, then the nut. The back piece for back here is this hardware and you're going to take a thin spacer and come up from underneath the frame. The way I designed this was so that we wouldn't pull any bolts through the frame. The concept is we're going to take the thin frame and we're going to pinch it with thick steel. Each side will have thick steel. Now we're over here on the driver's side. And as you can see, I can pull this and line it up. And this is the hardware that was sent to you. Now, if you do not have what we call a panning liner, which is a piece that goes in and reinforces the frame, goes right in here and gets welded in, inside there. So if you didn't get this, you did get this, and it would go bolt through the steel, then the washer, then the lock washer. And that is how we put in a super cradle. Thank you very much. Hope you liked the video. Gonna have a lot more of them real soon. Thank you.